Good afternoon and welcome to our uh, last day of the online C Digital Leadership Summit. Uh, with uh, more than five years uh, over the week, um, we had already a really uh, condensed week with uh, full of uh, webinars, and we are looking forward to today's uh, closing keynote by Scott Brinker. But before we start, uh, and, and more people still uh, join. Uh, I would like to remind you on our webinars that we had uh, since Monday. And uh, of course, you find all of them uh, for streaming either uh, via the link on LinkedIn, uh, on our website, or also in YouTube later on. And we started on Monday with a very interesting opening keynote by uh, Dirk Bloss from Bayersdorf. Um, and then we had on Monday as well uh, an interesting uh, session with Quantilope, uh, uh, the founder, Peter Ashmanite from Quantilope, and Christoph Kwiatkowski. And on Tuesday, don't miss that one, a very interesting um, talk from uh, Mirko Holzer, founder of, of uh, Brandmaker and a customer of Brandmaker with Stefan Giesecke from TMD Friction, a brake manufacturer. And uh, on Wednesday, we had uh, also a very interesting talk with a customer of uh, uh, Content Pepper and with uh, the co-founder Mark Zislik from Content Pepper, which is a, a digital experience management tool. And uh, if you don't know what that is, so don't miss this uh, webinar. And uh, yesterday, we finally had a, a very nice uh, talk uh, about uh, how you implement uh, and, and, and uh, uh, a tech stack for MarTech uh, in at Deutsche Bank and uh, hosted by my colleague, Sascha uh, Gopis. And so we are basically looking forward to today's uh, closing keynote uh, given by Scott. Uh, let me introduce Scott. Um, he is working for HubSpot as Vice President Platform Ecosystem, where he is uh, in charge of charting the uh, direction of the HubSpot uh, ecosystem strategy and the platform behind it. And uh, he is uh, also in the second current role uh, editor at chiefmartech.com, a must read for uh, every CMO, I would say. And uh, as such, also responsible for creating uh, the uh, marketing technology landscape, which you might have seen, and uh, it's growing and growing. This year's edition has already, uh, I think, uh, more than 8,000 uh, tools uh, mentioned. And uh, so, yeah, we will looking forward if Scott tells us a little bit about uh, how, how, how it comes that we see such a high number of tools. And Scott is also a program chair at the MarTech uh, conference. And I can tell you firsthand, it's a very interesting conference. I joined it uh, in 2015, 2016 in San Francisco. So don't miss that one. And uh, as soon as we can travel, of course, again. And so I would say a uh, warm welcome to Scott. And uh, we are looking forward to your keynote. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. So I will share a presentation here. Mm -hmm. And right. maybe just add, we had some technical issues with the camera from Scott, so we will just see his slides. But uh, yeah, we are anyhow looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. I, I assure you my slides <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, look much nicer yeah. than I do. So. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, uh, thank you for that great introduction. So uh, uh, no need to uh, hash that uh, again, other than to say, um, yeah, I've, I've spent the past couple decades really at this intersection uh, of the worlds of marketing and software development, IT technology, and it's just been fascinating to see this evolution. So you, you mentioned the Martin landscape. I suppose we should probably start there. Uh, this is the slide uh, we released a couple months ago of indeed 8,000 different marketing technologies around the world. Uh, this is by no means complete. Uh, there are, uh, I, I constantly hear every time we publish uh, these uh, from all the people that we missed. And you know, most people, it, it's it's kind of wild to just, you know, even see this. Like, uh, you know, if you haven't seen this before, it's like, even trying to just wrap your head around this of like, wait, 8,000 marketing technologies? Uh, and when I first started this project in 2011, what I was trying to do was persuade chief marketing officers 
that they really needed to embed more technical talent into their organization because they were becoming more dependent on these technologies to actually execute their mission. Uh, and so I put together a slide in 2011 of 150 different marketing technologies I knew of at the time. And everyone's reaction was, oh my goodness, 150, how will we ever keep track of them? And then just year over year, it really was this exponential growth. I mean, if I, uh, you know, look at this a little bit more quantitatively, right? You know, from 2011 to uh, this year, we're talking about 5,233% growth in the number of marketing technologies that we were tracking. Um, I mean, we all know that marketing is changing. It's, it's been changing tremendously this past decade, but it's sometimes hard to actually quantify exactly how that, you know, the, 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 the magnitude of that change. We feel it, but how do we quantify it? And I would argue the growth of the marketing technology landscape, while it's only one slice of that, it does give us a quantitative shadow uh, to understand of just like how significant uh, disruption and innovation and evolution of marketing has been. You know, and this has been a challenging journey for almost everyone. You know, most marketing departments, when uh, you know they first start to you know come face to face with uh, you know marketing technology, the reaction is initially, "Hey, listen, we're marketing. We're not in IT. We don't need to think about a stack of software. Please go away." You know, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a number of people out there who get angry. They get angry at me because just I even published this list. They're like, would you stop publishing these, you know, landscapes? You know, we hate them. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I get hate mail. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and then there's the bargaining stage, you know, where senior marketers say, okay, well, maybe if we just buy all the software from one vendor, we'll be set and everything will just magically work. But, you know, marketing is a really big domain at this point, and no one vendor can do it all. So inevitably, inevitably, any company is ending up leveraging multiple technologies. And, you know, I mean, if you end up feeling depressed or frustrated with this at some point, I mean, it's a total natural feeling. I mean, this is a lot of change to process. But the good news is, you know, we get through this. I mean, the reality is that this is the state of marketing today. And once you start to embrace it and learn how to leverage it, it's actually pretty cool. I would argue there's never been a better time to be a marketer. So much power at your hands. So for today's chat, I want to give you two two by twos. I, lo I love two by twos just as a way of thinking about what we do. One is to just understand a little bit about when we talk about technology talent in the marketing department. You know, what does that mean? What do these folks do? And I call these people marketing technologists. Uh, and we did some uh, research on them uh, earlier this year, putting them into four categories. Uh, basically, these, these brand demand builders, marketing managers, growth marketers who are leveraging technology. There's another category, uh, you know, on the left here of operations orchestrators. These are the marketing operations leaders, the CRM and marketing automation platform admins. You know, if we go down to the bottom half here, there's analytics architects. These are really the data science people and the marketing analysts in the department. Uh, and then a really interesting category on the lower right of what I call marketing makers. Uh, and these are the people who are the web developers, the app developers, the marketing engineers. And my, my uh, I, I love alliteration. So my, my shorthand is, you know, uh, we've got marketers, maestros, modelers, and uh, makers. Uh, and if you're wondering like what these different flavors of marketing technologists do, uh, I brought some data, uh, right? So marketers, as you might expect, you know, they're primarily the folks actually running campaigns with these technologies, campaigns and programs. But it's interesting that they do get involved in working with these tools as administrators. They do think about how they integrate. You know, they help train and support their peers. If you go over to the maestros, the marketing operations teams, right, they're the ones who take a lot of responsibility for training and supporting the rest of the marketing org on the marketing stack. Uh, they tend to be the ones leading workflow and process, uh, the ones primarily responsible for integrating and architecting the MarTech stack. Uh, down to modelers, this is where data science and data quality, a lot of our data systems, uh, you know, are led. Uh, and then the makers, yeah, they're the ones actually doing the, the building uh, of uh, customer experience uh, touch points. 
Uh, and it's interesting because then when you think about those missions they have, you can also look at how they spend their time. Uh, you know, like marketers spend a lot of time these days in marketing automation platforms. Uh, operations teams are the ones who are actually working with project management tools and spreadsheets. Everybody works with spreadsheets. Uh, modelers, you know, are the ones working with the business intelligence tools. Makers are the ones working with the CMS and digital experience platforms. Um, and so, uh, you know, you, you get the sense, right? There's actually a lot of technical talent that we're leveraging in different ways in the marketing department today. And as a CMO, you don't have to be one of those technical people yourself, but you do want to think about how you build a department to have those capabilities within it. So the next two by two I want to get to, uh, there's actually a nice transition from one to the other, which is to focus on these marketing operations and marketing technology leaders, because I think you really want at least one of them on your team. You know, and uh, if we looked uh, from the data on what uh, you know folks are responsible for, these marketing operations and technology leaders, they cover the gamut of technology, process, people, right? So they're architecting MarTech stacks and they're researching MarTech, integrating it. Uh, they obviously help with the implementation and operating it, which goes into process. They help design and manage internal workflows and process. Uh, and then, yeah, a huge responsibility for training and supporting the rest of the marketing team on how to leverage that. But one of the ways I like to think about how marketing technology and operations leaders can tackle their mission job is this two by two, which looks at it, uh, you know, from centralized to decentralize and automate to humanize. And these are really a set of capabilities that every marketing team wants to some degree, right? We want to centralize things for scale. We want to decentralize things for agility. We want to leverage technology and how we automate. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're, yeah, <laughs> embracing the talent and uh, the capabilities of people and how we humanize what marketing does. And so if you lay this out as a two by two, you know, each of these quadrants, you, uh, you get some interesting intersections, right? You know, it's about efficiency in the upper left, innovation in the upper right, uh, brand in the lower left, and then really the authenticity about how we deliver that brand in the lower right. So I want to just very briefly take you through each one of those quadrants and give you a sense of what marketing operations leaders do. So when we think about marketing operations, right, we tend to think of this upper left quadrant of centralizing and, you know, automating, which is certainly a big part of the job, right? Standardizing on common tools, sometimes called rationalizing your marketing stack. Uh, one of the things I do uh, is I, I run a contest every year inviting marketers to send in a slide that illustrates the way they think of their marketing stack, the different tools they use and, you know, how they connect them together into their mission. Uh, and over the years, there's been a couple hundred people sent in. Uh, companies like Cisco has actually entered multiple years in a row. All these stacks are available. You can just Google MarTech stackies. They're all up on SlideShare. Um, it's really fascinating to see not just the tools these different companies use, but how they think about integrating them into the customer journey, how they think about matching them to the capabilities of their organization, connecting them together. And I'll just throw out, uh, yeah, we actually are currently running the MarTech Stackies for 2020, extended to September. Uh, so if uh, you get inspired when you look at these and you want to send one in, uh, we'd love to love to have you. So it's standardizing on tools, certainly a lot of focus on standardizing on data. Not all data, but the, the important data, the most important one being, of course, identity, making sure we can recognize customers uh, on the different touch points they have with us. There's some standardization in process. We think a little bit of almost how do we treat marketing operations as a kind of platform itself. But where things start to get interesting is not just centralized technologies, but how do we leverage technology to empower the edge of the marketing org? How do we support things like local experiments and workflows? How do we support letting people bring their own tools for specialized tasks or work in specialized regions? And once you start having some of your own tools in the mix, how do we think about carefully governing and federating data across these tools? One of the most interesting trends happening right now in technology in general, but certainly in marketing, is this rise of citizen developers and citizen data scientists, citizen integrators. I mean, these are all 
you know, basically ways of things that required a technical specialist. There's now a set of technologies that allow non-technical business people to do a lot of these capabilities. And so I want to walk you through with just one example of this because it's it's really fascinating. There's that uh, Disney Pixar movie, Rat Tatouille, where, you know, it was like claiming uh, anyone can cook. And I want to try and convince you that anyone can develop, integrate, analyze. I'm going to argue that every single one of you is a software developer. You just don't necessarily know it. All right, here's how this goes. So over time, think about the amount of app-like functionality that the average marketer has had at their fingertips. We'll start with Excel. So how many of you know how to use Excel? If, if we were having this discussion in person, I would expect all of you to raise your hand, right? Everyone in marketing knows how to use Excel. It, it was marketing technology before there was marketing technology. What's interesting is in the past 10 years, right, there's been a shift where now a lot of these spreadsheets are collaborative spreadsheets in the cloud, like Google Sheets is one example. One of the things cool about Google Sheets is it also connects to something called Google Forms. So you can publish a form out on the web, collect data, and pipe it directly into a Google Sheet. Now, when you stop and think about it, this is kind of like a really simple app on that form that collects some data and pipes it into a really simple database, a spreadsheet. Now things get interesting. There's a whole collection of tools called Integration Platform as a Service, IPaaS. I know it's a mouthful, but it's these really simple tools like Zapier is a very popular one that basically let non-technical people take triggers, events from something that happens in one of your cloud apps. Like somebody, you know, goes to a page and fills out, you know, an offer on a website, you know, that that trigger then takes that data and you can, without getting a technologist involved, say, oh, well, I want to pass that data to my CRM and my marketing automation platform. And maybe if it meets a certain condition, I want to trigger a message in Microsoft Teams or Slack. Um, now, all of a sudden, you can connect all these tools, including to like Google Sheets. So any, you know, cloud tool that you can then pipe stuff into Google Sheets or take stuff from Google Sheets and pipe it out. Um, now we're talking about a lot of power. And in fact, there's a whole class of software that's emerged around the spreadsheet paradigm. Things like Airtable and AppSheet and SmartSheet and Salesforce Lightning Object Creator, you know, that if, if you can make a spreadsheet, you can make an app. I mean, just one example, there's something, if you go to glide.app, this is a uh, product that lets you fill out a Google Sheet and then it will turn it into a native app for iOS or Android. So I, I promised you at the you know the start of this section, right? If you know how to use Excel, congratulations, you're a software developer too. All right, so that's the technology side. Let's talk a little bit on the human side. You know, and on the decentralization, you know, and the, the human lens in marketing, it's really about empowerment. You know, it's about giving people, um, you know, not just in the marketing department, but anyone who impacts marketing by the way they touch people in sales or customer service or our product ourselves, it's about giving them these levers for empathy and intuition to be able to help customers sort of regardless of what the systems themselves are saying, right? Because, you know, systems can desync from a customer's experience. And so the more that, you know, marketing operations and technology leaders spend time with customers anthropologically in their own environment, the better they can understand, you know, what the experience is actually like for those customers and help uh, provide the capabilities to serve them better. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some technology for this too, things like uh, some really interesting uh, innovation in the domain of customer experience anomaly detection. Um, but to be honest, most of this is not about technology, it's about empowering people to make the choices to override or control the technology in the best interest of the customer. And then that kind of, you know, when we think about, okay, yes, we want to empower people to do that, then this gets us to the centralized portion of the human dimension where, okay, we need to be able to put the structure and the guardrails in place uh, to do that. And part of this is marketing enablement. It's just about teaching people how to leverage these capabilities. You know, we did a study about a year ago where two thirds of the companies we talked to said they didn't believe they had the skills or talent to make the most use of marketing technology. 
And to be honest, <laughs> I think the other third is just delusional, um, right? I mean, <laughs> there is a lot of change that is happening in marketing technology, and it's a lot to learn. And so we really need to invest in these programs. I mean, like one of the great examples there, so Airbnb, you know, built this amazing set of marketing technology to support data-driven decision-making in the organization and to actually empower everyone in Airbnb to make data-driven decisions. But then they realized as they were hiring all these people, even super talented people, most of them had never actually really learned how to make good data-driven decisions. And so it wasn't just about teaching them how to use the tool, it was really teaching them about, you know, what was possible with the tool and how to think about it. Um, and so they created this data university inside Airbnb to teach everyone, you know, how to harness the power of this technology. Uh, and they wrote a lot about this on Medium. So if you, you know, want to learn a little bit about how they approached it, uh, there's a really great case study there. You know, I mean, just because we're empowering people doesn't mean we let them do whatever they want, right? You need some sort of coherence, you know, to the brand as a whole, but it's about finding this idea of enlightened governance. How do you empower people in the way to really deliver, you know, value and adapt as necessary to deliver value? Um, you know, and this connects to things like our customer code, our culture code, you know, what are the principles by which we operate our business? And the reason I put them here is because I think this is something that a marketing operations, marketing technology leader really needs to pay attention to. They need to be at the table to make sure that the actual marketing technology infrastructure we're in place is being designed to uphold our values of the customer code and the culture code. All right, one last thing to, uh, before we wrap up here is uh, I kind of glossed over at the middle of this two by two was, you know, this infinite loop of uh, change. And I mean, here in 2020, we have certainly all come to appreciate, you know, how quickly and significant change can come to us. This is a huge responsibility for a marketing operations and technology leader is to design marketing infrastructure for change. You know, it starts with uh, adopting open platforms. Um, you know, over the past decade, we used to have this debate between suite versus best of breed. You know, you either get all the tools from one vendor, they're supposed to integrate, but you're limited by what that vendor does, or you go best of breed. You can pick, you know, your favorite tools from the whole MarTech landscape, but it's up to you to actually figure out how to duct tape them together. Obviously, neither one of these is ideal, but luckily the industry has been moving in the direction of platform ecosystems, which it's almost like sweet and best of breed, you know, so it's about, uh, you know, implementing these foundational systems, you know, for major companies like Salesforce and Adobe and Oracle and yes, HubSpot, I will, I will give a shout out for HubSpot here, you know, that almost become the tentpole for your marketing stack. But then being able to plug in third party applications that integrate to that platform to get more specialized capabilities as you need. This also includes, you know, supporting tools for self service, you know, it goes back to that whole citizen developer citizen analyst movement. And it's not just technology and architecture. It's about management methodology. You know, you've probably heard a lot about agile marketing. Uh, you know, it's this idea of being able to run the marketing department in a way that is adaptive. Uh, it isn't just about working faster, it's about finding a way to be able to adapt to change around us. So uh, I know that's a lot to hit you with here at the end of the week, um, but I hope this uh, framework of thinking about, you know, what the value marketing and operations and technology leadership can bring to your organization is about. Uh, whether you're doing this yourself or you are hiring someone to lead it, uh, I hope you find this framework helpful. So thank you very much and uh, yeah, delighted to uh, take some questions. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, it, it's really interesting to to see uh, uh, the thoughts behind it also. Uh, and and, and the, I like the Excel part, definitely, <laughs> because I've also seen in my, in my career, a lot of people doing fancy stuff on Excel and you're always surprised what you can do with Excel. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, but uh, we get already the first question. So let me just uh, do the following. I will read the questions loudly. So for everybody, I think you can also see it, but just that everybody can uh, hear it. 
the four types of marketing technologies do not really exist uh, like this today. How do you train them and how do you change uh, our marketing teams into the team structure? Oh, I, I actually do think uh, they exist today. So that 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 data came from a survey uh, of several hundred uh, marketing technologists who identified which quadrant they worked in. They were able to identify the responsibilities they had. Um, you know, we may not have always connected the dots, but the truth is, right, you know, if you think about those four quadrants, um, you want to make sure that the marketers themselves become trained and empowered on using, you know, the most common marketing tools. You need a marketing operations team that's really orchestrating how this stuff works together. And maybe not a team, you know, depending on the size of your company, you maybe just need a person or someone who, yes, I take responsibility for this. Uh, certainly data, uh, you know, if you, you really want, um, whether mm -hmm. it's just in marketing or more broadly, that, that sort of operations analyst uh, role. And then, yeah, the makers, again, whether they're officially in the marketing department or something adjacent, you know, it varies from company to company, but somebody's building your website, you know, mm -hmm. somebody's building your app. Uh, and so, yeah, I think a lot of companies already have those capabilities in place. They don't necessarily manage it as coherently as they could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe don't recognize them uh, in that form, yeah, but they might have it. Yeah, there's the next question. Uh, since marketing enablement seems a, a very important skill, does that mean we need to think about HR to be taking a different role as well? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, at the at the end of the day, this is, <laughs> I, I say it's the golden age for marketing. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it's also the golden age for HR. HR, yeah. Uh, right? I mean, the ability to find really great people from pretty much any global market at this point and to empower them and to train them and teach them. And, you know, we've learned so much about how to really, you know, enable human potential and diversity. It's... Um, yeah, I think the more your HR team is thinking about how to build these capabilities in your talent uh, over the years ahead, the better. Yeah, love that question. Mm -hmm. Then there is another one. Um, do you have best practice examples uh, for marketing organizations that support change and integration of the wide range of uh, talent necessary? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of case studies. So usually uh, when we run the MarTech conference, um, that is mostly who we get to present are basically marketing uh, technology leaders or CMOs uh, guided their companies through this. Um, you know, so one way is if you just go back to if you Google the various MarTech uh, on my blog, you know, we published all the agendas over the years. You, you can see actually a bunch of companies uh, and depending on the market that's most relevant to you, uh, by all means, reach out uh, to those people. I'm sure they'd love to share their experience. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, no more questions. Uh, maybe we give uh, another call. So if you have questions, ah, there is another one coming in. If MarTech is taking uh, over so much of marketing delivery, uh, what kind of role do you uh, do advertisement agencies have in the future? Do they move to MarTech consultancy? Yeah, that's a really interesting question too. Um, so one of the things that always amazes me about marketing is all this innovation that's happening around technology. It's not really replacing other things that have been marketing mm. responsibilities in the past in many ways it's just augmenting it it's like additive um you know and so there is still an incredible need for great creative advertising that resonates uh with audiences that helps to differentiate mm -hmm. and distinguish a brand um so i i think yeah absolutely i mean you know advertising agencies don't have to become martech agencies that being said, I think you got to recognize that advertising is, you know, obviously operates in an environment now that has a lot of technology behind it, you know, and the ability of, you know, how we target and distribute advertising, how we measure it, how we connect it to different stages of the customer journey. Um, I, 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 if you're an advertising agency, I think you want to be sophisticated, you know, mm -hmm. about how you interface, uh, you know, to the technologies in ad tech and martech. Um, but I don't think it devalues, you know, the the original value of, wow, somebody's got to be able to come up with really amazing, compelling advertising. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it will it will basically change the role of agencies and also how they uh, work. Uh, but uh, it it it's still I I also st still believe the the, the the creative agencies are still needed definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Is there any more questions or can we would close the session? Okay. Thanks, Scott. Thanks a lot uh, for uh, the session today and the very nice uh, keynote. And then I would say uh, we call it a day. And thanks everybody for joining us today and for watching our webinars throughout the week.